The mighty Kratos must now bring the gods back down to Earth. God of War 2. The end begins. Read it down for mature. What? What are you doing? What are you doing to my desk? Dude. dude. What, what do you do you ever throw anything away? What this is all this isn't crap? garbage. This is like my stuff. Blu-ray disc. This is not garbage. This is like the next generation of home video. Alright, seriously, like nobody like, keeps the their stupid battalion control. This is my shit. Did you throw 40? Are you even gonna drink that? Yeah, maybe I will. What, what the hell what is this? That is not my Betty White biography. <laughs> What? What are you it's doing? Like, what are you looking for, dude? What do you what do you want? Oh wait, I hit a I hit a, I hit a Pokemon patch. Hey, it's like Pikachu. Seriously, what are you looking for, man? There's nothing. Hey, that's my nice. MSX. Nice. Aha! I found it. What? At last. Sweet, sweet Dreamcast. Who cares? What are you gonna play on that? Delicious. That is so old. Hey, you can clean this up. Hey, Mark. Thanks. Who's gonna clean this up? Um, Virtual Tennis 3. I've been playing it. I was just playing it right now. I was too. I just paused the game a second ago. What were you playing? With you. What, what I was playing on PS3. What were you playing on? 360. Ah. Tell me about the 360 first. 360, um, I really like the controller. There's no rumble. Did you know? The rumble, the lack of rumble is weird. Obviously, on the PS3, I don't have it. But I do have the tilt stuff. How's you that know? work? Eh, whatever. Yeah. I think that tilt thing's so gimmicky. I'm not really into it for this. What do you think of the, uh, the single player modes in, as far as the tournament style of play? About the same as it's been. It doesn't seem all that new or different or changed or anything. There are right. a couple of new mini games, but it's mostly variations on stuff that already exists, like yeah. hit the serve this way or volley ten times in the center circle or something. Success! I think it looks great, mm -hmm. you know. So I mean, when I'm playing those mini games and all that stuff in the in the tournament mode, I like the way it looks a lot. Um, the characters look really good. Um, what else did you uh, did you notice about the game that you kind of? I kind of there's a lot of diving I noticed that we've a seen. Lot of diving. Yeah. And I didn't really remember that from the first one so much. Yeah. But once you get kind of locked into the diving back and forth, the point's kind of over. Yeah, I just lunge, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm throwing my body around, and the ball pops back slow, and the guy hammers it. It seems a little bogus. I mean, it, it seems like the, the game effectively is kind of broken in that way, and they, they're, they're trying to cover something up with a dive, mm -hmm. which, yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was a little bit lame. But I don't know if you noticed this. One thing in the tournament mode is, you only play pro players. So if you're on like the 300 level, because mm -hmm. you, you progress in the career mode from 300 level to 200 level, 100 level, 50 level, to be the number one player overall. Yeah. And when you're at the 300 level, you're playing Roger Federer, but he's also at your level. Mm -hmm. So probably the, the greatest athlete alive today, sorry, Tiger, 
But the greatest athlete alive today, you, you play him at the 300 level and he plays like a total bum. Yeah, you destroy him. It's I totally played him my first match in the, in the tournament, I just destroyed him. Yeah, I The next that. time I met him, I was ranked 218 or something, he destroyed me. Like, yeah. there's, it didn't really make much sense. I loved virtual tennis on Dreamcast. My yeah. friends in college, we would play that like every night. Like four players, we'd be passing it around, we'd have teams and strategies and be great. And yeah. I think if you're looking for that, you're gonna find it in three. But if you're looking for something more meaty, then just get topspin too, I think. Premier set, service fédéral. Zero. It is, uh, what's the player you play with most? Hemmen, serve and volley, yeah, definitely. It's, that's especially effective in doubles because you just crash the net and he's dominating. Yeah. Uh, we haven't played yet. Do you want to go try it online? But I'll take you there. Finally, we're together. I mean, together, like, it's us. I want you to know how special you are to me. I just feel so alive when I look at you. You know, I see things now that I didn't see before. I have a sense of clarity and purpose. It's like, it's like destiny, you know. I feel like I'm the one that's discovered beautiful and perfection. I want to climb to the top of Everest and say, I know what beauty is. I am in love with the Vizio. <laughs> Vizio. So it's hard to play with this mask on, but I do think it enhances my uh, Master of Disquise experience. Do you feel like you're, uh, what do you feel like? I feel like an extra and wide, eyes wide shut. It, this mustache kind of smells a little. I think it was the Borat mustache and it's got an odor. You guys have been playing this about as long as I have. It's, it's way more awesome than the Jim or uh, the Dana Carvey movie Master of Disguise. Yes. I've got to give it that. I am very there's happy no, that there's no fire I am the Master of Disguise. I have found myself saying that over and over again. You watch that movie? No, I just saw the movie no, posters. I, but the uh, movie posters alone were enough to make me say that movie is a load of balls. So we have determined that that movie has nothing to do with this game. Nothing whatsoever. Mm. Right, and, that this, and this is better than a load of balls. It, it does have about the same level of scatological humor as a Dana Carvey movie, though. <laughs> Poop yeah, everywhere. Maybe, maybe perhaps the same writers on the script. Could be. Yeah, could be. There, yeah, is, yeah. there is a lot of fecal material in this game. There's also a lot of script, which... Yeah, there's okay. a lot Wario, of you don't play Wario games yeah, the for the first story. The half hour of the game was like just like... All, all text, all scrolling hey, it's a fat text. guy talking to another fat guy. It's really clear that Wario Master of Disguise was not designed by the people who have developed the previous Wario Land games. It's just, like, everything about it is different. The graphics are not nearly as good. They're kind of this assy-looking pre-rendered stuff, even if they're not really pre-rendered. They have that kind of plasticky, ugly look to them. The sound is boring, whereas usually Wario games have, like, this really weird kind of surreal sound to them. There's none of that in this. There's none of the usual, like, cleverness to it, either. It's, it's a pretty standard platformer, aside from the controls. It, it's clear that the Wario team is off doing WarioWare, <laughs> and this was farmed out to someone else. Right. And it's nice of them not to call it Wario Land, because it doesn't sully my memories of the original series. They even put lots of little mini-games in here for you to suffer through every time you open a treasure chest. And those mini-games are seriously so retarded. They're like, follow the dots, connect the, they're highlights for kids in a mini yep. game. Right, or, yeah, or, or paint this section. It's or paint this section. Remember what color it is here, we're gonna leave it on the, the screen as long as you need. Dentist waiting room video it game is. experience. It's absolutely highlights for children. The, the thing that frustrated me the most with it, as far as like a platformer, I think of platformers as being these, these faster, games and this felt so slow well, because like a lot of my 
attacks, you have to draw. And then there were times where it messed up, like it didn't read, like I was drawing the Cosmic Mario helmet and it would think I was drawing the right. the, the artist, artist. Ma the artist yeah, Mario. Yeah, just to and clarify that, like to change characters, you have like all these different disguises that have different abilities and you have to, on your character, draw, let's say, a circle for like right. the spaceman suit or a check mark for your thief suit mm -hmm. and just, you know, different things to do that. And so like in the middle of action, you try to do that and that's when you might mess up and it might read like this lollipop type look. Kind of like how Brain Age circle. would read like a three as an eight sometimes right. and I'd be yeah. like, I know what that number is. Yeah, it can be it can be kind of frustrating. I haven't had too much trouble, but yeah, occasionally in the heat of a battle when you have to switch between costumes as you're fighting a boss and you draw the wrong thing and you have to start your little process of du of weakening him all over again. That's pretty frustrating. Yeah, you know, that said, like, I enjoy not going to a menu to change abilities and how it is just on the screen. And right. you, can quick you can quickly do it. You know, I hate the menu access things in some of these games. But there's little icons at the top that, you know, show which disguises you have access to. I don't know why they couldn't have moved that to the bottom yeah. screen and just, just let you tap it. it. Yeah, that would have been I a lot tap. more effective. Well, I feel like they kind of, like, lashed it on there so that you'd be using a stylus yeah, in this it's, it's one of those innovative where they said well we've got this feature let's see how we can force it into the rest of the game whether exactly. it really fits or not i don't think it's as as interesting as as the wario land games do you think that's because the puzzles are kind of not as clever as the other they, they don't seem i mean well the level the level designs are usually the puzzle right exactly figuring out you know you you get and status one, ailments from enemies in the other games and, and this that's, one wants you to use the different disguises right. to get through the different but they're like, all pretty areas obvious. but it's really obvious yeah. the thing is i but, but i, I stumbled wouldn't even through use those it. even without without the uh, the professor thing because right. if you shoot a laser it'll go through and i was like oh that's a that's actually something i can crawl through so i didn't even need the professor disguise at all because that's all he does is show you hidden hidden passages it's kind of yeah pointless. that's one of the problems is that um, each disguise some of them are so one dimensional, like you're only gonna be using it for that one puzzle, and it right. seems almost like a waste. Like, do you really need eight of these if mm -hmm. you're only gonna use four actively, you know, mm -hmm. to any regular degree? It has the weird um, <laughs> press up for jump, you know, that's yeah. always a yeah. little different. You're like, oh, okay. It's like Street Fighter, but that's okay for a fighting game, maybe not a platformer. Yeah. Where plat wherein platformer is a genre in which you jump frequently. Right, <laughs> right. there's a couple of times you have to do uh, like really tight jumps, and like you actually yeah. need you know, con good control. So that, right. it's frustrated me a few times. Yeah, I don't think it's as terrible a game as some people are saying, but it definitely it definitely feels like a letdown considering the quality of Wario's previous games. I mean, all the Wario Land games have been from good to awesome. And this is kind of maybe a little less than good. Yeah, it's hard it's hard to come down on it because it's like average. But I mean, when it when it's got this family that is like fantastic, right. he's kind of like the kid who's not so quick is well, the best. Well, Nintendo's farming out all its platformers these days. Um, weirdly enough, I think the one, the best ones have been the ones that have been sent to Tose, the, mm -hmm. the vast secret underground conspiracy company. <laughs> um, this was developed by Suzak, who has done a lot of like boring, crappy GBA games, and it kind of shows. Yeah, no, I don't hate the game, but... I don't, I'm not dying to finish it, which no. I have to for review, but... Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, thank you. Yo, Ooh, what's up? Yeah, thanks for uh, trashing my area earlier. That it was, was worth it. We got the Dreamcast. We got to play a little uh, Lost Hope. Last Hope. Last Hope. And was it worth it? Well, I'm saying no. I'm saying Trash My Desk was not worth playing a vaguely competent Neo Geo port. Oh, wow. It's like an R-Type fan fiction. Right. It's, like, it's <laughs> so obviously based on R-Type. You have this little ship who has, you pick up a, a guy who, you know, guards you from bullets just like R-Type. You can't shoot him off though. We should, so instead of like being able to shoot him off or have him do different stuff, you can just move him around either clockwise or counterclockwise right. with the Dreamcast controller shoulder buttons, which it was weird like playing with yeah. the Dreamcast controller Wait, again. I hadn't played the Dreamcast in over a year, you know, like I was a big fan when it was there and then like as, you know, as the years progressed it became more and more irrelevant. It's like this weird footnote in history. When you pull it out now and hold this controller, it's like what were they thinking? The controller <laughs> yeah. is really bad. Yeah, but did you see the VMU thing? They even included a little... Like this hideous little monstrosity <laughs> monster like 
jumping up and down. But the game, so the yeah, like our type, the game is really fucking hard. The first stage is set up similarly. The second stage looks like a lot of like with the Irem game, the Pole Star is another oh, Neo yeah. Geo game that the guys went on to make. Dude, it's, it's basically just a bad cover version of like our type meets Pole Star. See, I don't think it's that bad though. I mean, yeah. as something that's like fan made. Yes, okay, it's definitely not up to like the Konami shooters we've also been playing, like the, the well, PSP reissues just came out. That's what surprises me, like, so those, playing those games again, all those games are really old, and like there are a few games in there that I hadn't played before, like Zexa. Cause that's, that's on the Salamander awesome. like, portable yeah, collection. Salamander is my favorite Konami shooter series, and like this is one I never knew existed, it came out in like 91, I think, right. um, and never came out to any home platform, so this is the first chance I ever got to play it, and Zexa is in every way superior to Last Hope. <laughs> Cool because they actually did something with like the R-Type formula that was different enough that made me respect this. So you, you have the pod, but you can either charge up a shot and you shoot out these big tentacles, or you kind of let the pod roll out and it has up to three tentacles yeah, it, that it, just kind of right, go on and its you own. can kind of position it as like a shield and right. ways, and yeah, it's really effective on bosses. It'll go attack the bosses. Right, right, right. Yeah, like playing that and then playing this Last Hope, it's literally like Last Hope is like a crappy budget homebrew game. And then, I'm sure that game cost like $50 in Japan, and like, right? Like, right, if, yeah. If that game were like a $7 downloadable for Xbox Live Arcade or PlayStation Network, more power to more, it. Yeah, good yeah, good yeah. job. But yeah. as like a standalone retail game, it's embarrassing. I would definitely buy Salamander Portable. It's only on Japan. It's, it, they haven't announced it for here. Right. It's probably not going to. Also, Parodius Collection, I was surprised. Like, it's, you know, it's Gradius. It's like a joke on Gradius, but like, it's it's way easier, right. and it's just hilarious. Like the different the bosses well, are great parodies. Like especially like sexy parodies. We play that. There's like yeah. a Castlevania level. There's like levels that are like parodies of other of other Konami franchises. Right. The options too in the different Konami collections. Some of them are a little different. Like I like that in the in in most of them in the Salamander and in the Parodius you can stretch it out to fill up the right. whole PSP screen. It kind of sucks because it's stretched, you know, they're made for the old ratio, like four or three yeah. arcade screens, but you know, it, it gives you that option to either do it original size or large size, keeping the original ratio or filling up the screen. And filling up the screen didn't stretch it too bad, I didn't mind. The thing I, I, I just don't like when those those games turn into vertical shooting. Well, you don't like vertical Horizontal shooting. shooters are just no, I like inherently I like better. Vertical shooters. That's probably why you don't like Twin Bee. The Twin Bee collection is like, forget it. It's, uh, it's worthless. There's good stuff on It's there. worthless. There's good stuff on there. It's cutesy poo. It's all vertical shooting. Like the, the whole bell system totally annoys me. Well, I think the bell system is not as good as the normal power system because you're, you, you keep hitting these bells trying to get the color you want. It's, it's right. frustrating. You always hit it too many times. Right, because you're shooting and you're shooting at the enemies, but the bells at the same time, you're pushing them back up the screen. Yeah, but it drives me nuts. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're jonesing for a shooter, Salamander Collection is definitely worth it. I wish yeah. they would bring it out here, actually, because it's it wouldn't take much to. Uh, I don't think the Gradius Collection did very well here. So right, you know, just the shooter, yeah, the shooter market is dead. I mean, like you yeah. and I are into shooters, but if you're here in the office, people walk by, they're like, "What are you playing?" Yeah, like, yeah, what, what the hell? Who plays these shooters anymore? Yeah, people saw the Dreamcast. They were like, "What the hell is going on?" Well, and the game does not look good. Also, it looks like a 16-bit game at best. I, I agree mean, with you. It should be like a, a, like <laughs> like 15 bucks or something like yeah. that. But I. It was just nice to play, like, I like supporting this little indie group, and it was honestly, like, it was just nice to play like a shooter again, but yeah, playing the Konami games, you you realize, like, okay, this is what a team of polished, like, professionals at the height of their game in, like, the late 80s, early 90s, what they were doing with it. Yeah. All right, well, sorry about the, uh, the big mess over in your area, yeah, but... I hope it was worth it. I hope you got your fun out of your Dreamcast, dude. Yeah, it was, you know, yeah. it was worth it for me. Was it worth it for the intern? Poor Brooks had to clean that for like an hour, or so. Uh -huh. And that's what interns are for. This is the new shrink ray from Ratchet and Clank for PlayStation Portable. And we're gonna shrink our friend Larry so he can sneak into the girl's tent while they're changing. <laughs> wow. Dude. Is that an owl? Yeah. The Shrink Ray. All new weapons, all new levels. Ratchet and Clank size matters. Rated everyone 10 and up. PSP.
get some coffee, huh? Now that you're back, I see. It was a long trip. I always get lost in Seattle. Hey, you know, I, you know, I wanted to go, right? What are you, you talking about? The Forza thing. You know how bad I wanted to go to that, and you wound up. Uh, oh, I'm just gonna go. No, no problem. So how was it? It was. Um, I can't believe we're only five weeks away from being finished. Uh oh. No, I mean it, it's it's shaping up really, really nicely, but um, yeah, but it's still. still. I mean, you can see in the screenshots that they're not finished. Coming from your world into this world, it was just like, it was really eye-opening because um, all these things we took for granted, you know, as editors, you come here and you just expect like, well, it should work this way, and you don't you realize you don't know shit about games and games development. You just don't know. They kind of build it inside out, and they build all the simulation, the physics, and everything, and then they gradually put the, the gloss on it, so they don't make it look pretty, and then make it work. They make it work, and then they make it look pretty. I mean, it does some really interesting things with with damage that you know we've not seen in a game like this before, and a lot of stuff where they're kicking up dirt, and so What's I mean, it, it was damage. Well, I mean, it has it, so well, it had damage. <laughs> it had damage before, though. But I mean, that they're, they're doing it. You can't flip cars. But um, you can like hit something and something will fall off and it'll stay on the track. So the so the race is a persistent sort of physical environment. So if we're racing around and we're we're drafting off each other and I clip your back bumper off, it'll it'll fall off and it'll land on the track and it'll stay there. It goes so deep into into this stuff and it's it's very much a simulation. The whole game's modular, right? Yeah, it's very modular. Uh, it's really a sandbox, so we don't. You can advance through the game however you want. Do these races, these races, use these cars, and what we're trying to do is teach you a little bit every time. My ultimate goal is to take gamers and turn them into car freaks, and to take car freaks and turn them into gamers. And the two aren't so far apart. We all kind of share this lust and this love of cars. Very few people in the world are going to even see an Enzo in their life, but if you ever do see one, it. It's an emotional experience. I mean, some people are going to get righteous indignation, like, oh, that car's so expensive, it's too expensive. And other people are just going to be awestruck by the, the sheer design and beauty of the car. There's different affinities that people have, and that's that car lust. And it doesn't mean you need to know everything about cars. You mm -hmm. just appreciate it. Um, it's interesting what they're doing with, with force feedback. They have um, Sebring in this one, and it has a, a ridged track. They have Sebring? Yeah. Well, that's cool, because so no one's had that. No one's had that before. Um, if you ever come off the Golden Gate Bridge, and it's it's in sections, and you go over it, and it goes boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah. And if you're going over it at any speed, it, it you know, you can feel every bump through the wheels, and you get that traction. Well, Sebring, there's this huge bend, and it's just like that. And as you go over it, you can feel every bump in the track. And that's because it's rendering everything on the physical side so quickly that you, you, you're feeling it tug and you're feeling the wheel go and you're feeling the, the rumble at the same time as the force feedback and it's coming through on the 5.1. If you play PGR and you think, eh, I don't know if this wheel's any good, because you know the range of movement was pretty bad yeah. and the feedback wasn't quite right and this, I mean, they've modeled everything around the wheel. So if you're really into cars, you're going to want to set it up with the wheel. They had it set up with three networked 360s three 40-inch screens, one of those VFX chairs with a kicker and a 5.1 system on it and the wheel and the pedals and everything. And that was awesome. Oh, okay. So you could have eight, eight setups like this potentially playing against each other? Potentially, yeah. In fact, uh, I was talking to the networking, uh, like the dev who only works on triple screen, and he said that it's not really limited to three screens either. If you wanted to, we could you know, have six screens. You could have full 360 screen. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you probably wouldn't turn around you know, to look behind you. No, so, but yeah. Still. Yeah, it's pretty badass. <laughs> <I know. laughs> there are people uh, who no, do one that. In the, no one in their right mind is, is really going to have a setup like that. But did they get the camera position right? I mean, does yeah. it feel like when you're, you're driving? When you're, in the when you're in that first person view, right. I mean, it feels like you're in the car. And particularly, I mean, the three-screen setup they had, I mean, it really felt like you are in the car, but we played it later just on a normal setup, and it was, it's in the right place, you don't feel too high, you don't feel too low. So 
now one of the ways that you can you can acquire money in the game, like in-game money, is through the auction house, which they announced a couple of weeks ago. They're making a big deal about paint jobs and decals, and it has this sort of layering system like Photoshop, where you can keep adding things, and you know, there's like a thousand layers on each side of the car that you can do with vinyl. Can, um, create a paint job and sell it so you can either lock it to a car and sell the car or you can you can build it as a as a style and apply it to anything in your garage so every time you acquire a car you can apply the same paint job and decals to it and then stick it in the auction house what they're talking about a little bit is trying to establish like intellectual property within the game so you can lock a design to a car it could sell it to you and the design is locked to that car now you can paint over it and it's gone forever, or you can keep it. Now, I can set to either lock it to the car or not. If I lock it to the car, only that car in your collection will have that design on it. If I leave it unlocked, you can take the paint job from that car and then apply it to anything in your collection. Oh, nice. So you can, so like, you're basically like selling me a set of clothes that I can right. put on any, any vehicle. And I, I can to. choose if I want to share it or if I want to make it proprietary. So if I want to make it proprietary, I can sell unique cars through the auction system oh, to nice. people. This is finally delivering on all that bullshit that Jay Allen was talking about, right, right. where, you know, whatever, Skater Girl is going to be painting skateboard decks and selling them over Xbox Live. And this is as close to that as I think they've come. The vision for me is to just be an inclusive game, a place where a community, a giant community can meet and argue and have opinions and, and just sort of uh, pollinate each other with what's cool about car culture. We're integrating the game and the website together so that uh, when you're playing the game, you know, you have this interactive experience on Xbox Live and then you come to the website and you can check out all the stuff you've done in the game, auctions, photos that you've uploaded, you know, you can check your scores, your leaderboard stuff. And then uh, you can just chat with all sorts of Forza fans. Um, and they're very vocal, very opinionated. Games take a long time to develop. And you want, you know, when you have a game, you want, you want it to have legs. You, know, you, want, it, you want it to grow. And um, with Xbox Live and DLC, I mean, Forza 2 is going to be around for a while. And I think uh, having this, you know, ForzaMorsport.net as the, sort of the, the hub of the online community is, is important for, for, the, for players to play the game for you know, two, two, two and a half years, three years to come. Um, as far as d downloadable content, you know, we're, we're kind of just surviving right now. We got to get this game out. We're all focused on polish, 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 really make it shine. You know, lots of the artists here, track artists, cars, they don't stop working, which is, you know, which is what we've said is that, um, I mean, they might get a couple you know, weeks off, but after that, they're, they're kind of, I think they're right back at it, so. Say you give me a pack that's got 10 cars in it, like how do you, how do you decide what's a fair price for that? You well, know? you know, we're, it's a little bit easier for us in that we're a licensed game. So we pay to put the car in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have a value attributed to each one of these cars that we're paying to put it in the game. Uh, paying the licensor just for the right to have it. And then we pay a certain amount to build it. We know how long it takes to build it and how many artists. So we actually have, we know exactly how much it's worth. And uh, I actually believe that we're going to take a, we're going to take a hit on this because our content is extremely expensive to make. Mm -hmm. And with downloadable content, because you're not providing like 300 amortized over all this different stuff, uh, you know, I'm not crunching the numbers in my head here, but I'm just saying like off the top of my head, I think it's more likely that we're going to pay for the downloadable content even if players pay and even if it's sponsored, mm -hmm. um, just because the nature of our business model. That doesn't mean I don't want to do it because again, as Chase said, it gives a game legs and that's, yeah. that's huge for us.